Hey, how's it going everyone? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So right off the bat, you may notice that the sound is a little bit different. Maybe not, maybe I shouldn't have said anything, and now you definitely notice it because I just brought it up. But I am in the middle of moving, so uh, I'm in a different room, and stuff is everywhere, and my mic's in a different place, and I don't know. Uh, it'll only be like this for the next, uh, this episode and the next one probably, and then go back to normal. So the last time we left off, we... Uh, made our main menu splash screen, kind of. Made a little picture that fills up the entire screen and has the name of our game. And uh, hopefully you guys that wanted to were able to make your own because I cannot vouch for the prettiness of this one. You know what I've been thinking? So this episode we're gonna make buttons. And uh, so we can make like a play button and stuff like that. And I have one and I've already implemented it here or I've imported it called play button and you can get it from the video description, just download the link or whatever. But what I'm thinking is I might do some Photoshop tutorials on the uh, channel, so you guys that want to make your own stuff, as far as like own buttons and stuff like that, can start making your own stuff and not having to rely on my art. Uh, because as you may have noticed by now, I'm not super artistic, but I do know my way around Photoshop. I'm just not, don't have very good uh, decision-making skills on what looks good and what doesn't. So I might put up a few tutorials if there's any interest in Photoshop and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, so what we're going to do this time is we're going to make buttons. So first, I spent some time thinking about how we're going to do our UI, and I came to the conclusion, I guess, I got the idea that we should make a new package, because we're going to make a lot of classes, like one for like buttons, and one for, you know, toggles, or switches, or sliders, or whatever. There is some of that stuff already uh, native to Java, but I feel like it'd be better if we made our own, and we had more control over it, and you guys can see exactly what goes into making these kinds of devices. So we're going to make a new package called UI. Uh, yes. We can call that. I wasn't sure because we're going to make a new class called UI as well. And so the, what I'm imagining is we're not going to have UI be static. It's not going to be a helper. Originally I was thinking that we were going to have it be a helper. We could just statically call the stuff. I think it would be better if we actually had it as an object that we can create in every uh, place of the game. So on the main menu, we'll make a UI for the main menu. And in the game, we'll make a UI for the game. And in the editor, we'll make a UI for the editor. So we're not just calling a static UI, we're actually making a new UI for each part of the game. So what we're gonna do in here is we don't actually need that many variables. Uh, one thing we do need right away is a array list of type button, and I'll call it button list. And make sure to import array list right there. And of course, button's gonna give us an error because we don't have a button class. So just go ahead and make a new class named button. And that should get rid of that error. And now for our constructor, we're gonna say public UI takes no arguments. And we're just gonna initialize our button list. So new array list of type button. All right, and let's go to our button class now. And we need some variables for our buttons. We need a texture. And we need some positions, so x, y, width, and height. And import texture. And we're also going to give it a, a name or an ID for an identifier so we can find it later and name it. So private string name. And now for the constructor, we're going to make a couple different constructors. So public button, and the first one's going to take everything. So that's a name, a texture, uh, x, y, width, and height. And you're going to set that all equal to uh, the stuff that we have at the top there. Oops. All right, and once you have that, we're gonna make a second constructor. So the way this works is that you can make unlimited constructors for a certain class. So for our button class, we have different constructors here. And as long as they take different arguments, so as long as they take different things in these parentheses. So this time we're just gonna take a name and a texture and an X and a Y and set this stuff up again. 
that texture equals texture x equals x does that y equals y and this is bothering me up here and now for width and height what we can actually do is we can say this dot width equals our texture dot get image width and same thing for height this dot height equals texture dot get image height and so the way this works is our texture it'll actually read the width and height from the actual image file and we'll apply that to our button so our button will be like a native size according to what image we give it uh, so we're probably going to use this at first and then this is more when we get into like resolutions and scaling and stuff if you want to make a button appear bigger or smaller than the actual image that's what this is for we can specify a width and a height other than the default width and height so now that we got this done let's go to the uh, bottom here and go to source right here generate getters and setters and just select all of them and have it automatically create getters and setters for us and I'm not sure if I want to make an update and a draw method inside of the buttons yet. I'm not sure because that would require us importing the use of the uh, mouse or the our artist methods for draw quad text and stuff. I think what I'd rather do is just have the UI handle all the drawing and have the buttons just be like just be like a class that collects data, like the name and the, the X and the Y, the position of the button, and we can take that data and make the button in our UI class. So instead of our UI we're going to make a uh, public void add button and this is going to take a lot of the same arguments here so a name a texture an x and a y we won't make the other one for now that has the width and the height we can do that later uh, so for now we'll just make the uh, simple one here and inside of this we're just going to say button list dot add new button and just give it the name, the texture, the X, and the Y. So now we can call out this method from outside of our UI in order to make a new button and add it to our button list. And once we've done that, we're going to make the uh, draw method here. So that'd be public void draw. And we're going to say for button B in button list draw quad text at b get texture b get x b dot get y b dot get width and b dot get height and of course we need to import that method from our artist class so import static helpers to artist dot star right there so now we're drawing all of the buttons in our button list. So let's go back to our main menu class and let's set up a variable to hold our UI. So private UI, we'll call it menu UI. And we need to import that. And in our constructor, we can say, let's say menu UI equals new UI. And then we can say UI dot why can I oh oops menu UI dot add button and we will call it play the texture is oh you know what we need to hmm we actually need to pass a texture here in order to uh, we would need to import the quick load method from our artist class so what we do instead is I'm going to go to the UI class and in here instead of taking a texture we're just going to take a string for the texture name. And then when we create the button, we're going to quick load it within the UI. There we go. That way we don't need to import the artist class into our uh, main menu here. So we can just actually just put in quotes the name of the texture, which is play button. And the X will be our width divided by 2. And the texture is, I believe, 256 wide, so minus 128 should give us the uh, center, which would center our button. And then for the height, we can, uh, let's say, it needs to be an int, and then parentheses, we're going to say height, which is our screen height, times 0 0.45. So about 45% of the way down the screen. And now in our update, we need to call menu y 
dot draw. <sighs> I'm trying to think. I feel like I'm missing something, but we'll try it. Hey, it worked. I mean, of course it worked. So, now whenever we want to make a button, it's super easy. We just call the menu UI dot add button method, and we can make buttons all over the screen. All we need is a texture for each button, and then a name and a position. And based on the texture, X and, or uh, width and height, it'll automatically size that for you appropriately and put it on the screen. So this is great. I mean, feel free to uh, make your own buttons and play around with it, or you can actually download button packs online. There's actually like texture packs. Maybe I'll put a link to a free texture pack in the description. I can't promise, but I'll try. Um, and what we're going to do next episode is we're actually going to uh, give our buttons action, right? Because right now they're kind of boring. Right now they just kind of sit there and look pretty. And so by the end of the next episode, we'll be able to click our buttons and actually bring us into the game or do whatever. Maybe we'll add like a an option button and a uh, quit button. In fact, you know what I'll do? I don't have it prepared right now, so I can't do it in this episode. But what I'll do is I will put a link in the uh, description to uh, two more buttons. And you guys can try yourself to add the buttons on the screen and uh, see if you can do that before next episode. I mean, we'll do it at the start of next episode, but just, you know, if you want to try it out, I'll have the link to two more button textures. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.